uh, or offense and defense. They were 17th in defense and 13th in offense. So to go 6-9 in your middle of the pack and, you know, you had injuries to go with it, that's a sign of good things maybe to come for them. And they drafted Joe Mixon. That might be the guy that they've been looking for all along. Uh, he'll maybe in some trouble, you know, or, you know, it's going to be a three-headed monster instead of a two-headed monster. I don't think they're going to do anything with Gio Bernard. I think he's going to stay there and be that change of pace back. Uh, they picked up John Ross, a speedy wide receiver, to go with A.J. Green and uh, Tyler Boyd. So I think they think they have their wide receiver group solidified. Uh, the biggest thing for this team is stay healthy. I mean, like again, I said Tyler Eifer, he's one of the best tight ends in the NFL if he can stay healthy. So if he can stay healthy, they got a good chance to make a run at this and make some noise. But their their biggest problem is the playoffs is that is you won and done. You never you never get over the hump. And Marvin Lewis is, you know, is is on the hook for that. You know, so we'll see what happens, you know, with the Ravens. So since I mean the Ravens, since uh the, with the Bengals. So since I got the Bengals finished in second place, that only leaves last year's winner, uh, which will be this year's winner as well, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And before I finish up with the Pittsburgh Steelers, shouts out to my man BS3 Sports. Ben, he is in the building, uh jumping in. So I appreciate you dropping in with us, Ben. Uh we're talking about the AFC North review. Uh, and right now we're talking about first place. I got the Steelers finish in first place. They went 11 and five. And this to me, I think this has really been Roethlisberger's last, last year. Uh, he always gives everything, you know, uh, to the team, uh, every year, but I really think, you know, he knows it. I think, you know, he just don't want to put it out there just yet because then everybody would be talking about it. Then this is a farewell tour and all this stuff. And, and, and it's just too much going on at that point. And then it's, it's already a circus. You don't want to make it, you know, circus times 10, you know, if, if he's talking about he's done. But I think he's done after this year. And he's like, I'm just going to give everything I got and, and whatever's left in the tank is going to be exhausted this year. Now, the other thing is, is that. You got Le'Veon Bell, which I still think this he, he will sign the franchise tag and he'll come and play. I don't think he's going to miss any games. So last year he missed three games. He's not going to miss any games. I think he'll be in there, you know, uh, uh, week one and he'll be ready to go. The other thing that people are now starting to talk about is Martavis Bryant should be back. Now, he hasn't been fully reinstated. He is at the facilities practicing on the on the side, so he can't play with, you know, with, with his actual teammates. But he is at least in the facility getting himself together and getting ready to go. That dude right there is something. That, I mean, he's a monster. And, and he's a big play machine where Antonio Brown is just basically Mr. Consistent, Mr. You know, I, I hit you here, I hit you there. Boom. I'm on my way to the touchdown uh, end zone, you know, and all that stuff. Martavis Bryant is basically a dude just like, man, just put that thing up and, and, and I'll go get it, you know, and, and to put that with Le'Veon. Uh, that now there's green is not there no more, but I think their tight end situation is going to be okay. But the biggest thing, Biggest team more than anything because they finished seventh in offense last year. Is that I think their defense is starting to catch on. And Pittsburgh has been known to be a defensive, you know, uh, uh, staple, you know, in the NFL. And they kind of got away from that because they had some young guys, you know, on their team. And now I think those guys have learned, like Artie Burns, you know, and all that stuff. I think they are going to now mature into their positions. Um, You still, you know, Got to find some replacements for like, you know, James Harrison, you know, and, and all that stuff. Because, I mean, you can't expect James to, you know, play forever, even though it looked like he could, you know. But that along with, and I wish Reggie Reggie uh, was in here. Um, the guys won a Super Bowl, so I'm not going to, you know, just torch him or anything like that. but. Mike Tomlin can't, you know, is there's no more, you know, uh, situations where because people be defending him and then people be criticizing him and everything. I just think now is the time for him to just be like, you know what? And any, I mean, he does this every year. 
you know, but really, you know, get these guys to lock in. Antonio, don't be talking in the background, you know, when I'm, when, I, when I'm talking. You know, Le'Veon, get your butt in here, you know, and, and, and let's get this thing going. You know, uh, let's get Martavius, you know, into the situation. Martavius, don't do nothing, you know, crazy. And, and, and get everyone to realize that they have a talent to run up against the Patriots. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. You know, but it's going to be on Mike Toblin. It's going to be, you know, he's going to be everything that keeps uh, uh, the glue together, you know, on that. Because as soon as one thing, you know, uh, try and go, you know, to the side or whatever, they're going to look at Mike Tomlin. So Mike Tomlin needs to rally the troops, you know, and, and, and get them, you know, going. He's not a bad coach, you know, at all. Uh, I like the guy, you know, it seems like, you know, he, he's a guy that, that definitely, you know, uh, don't play around, but he's made some mistakes in the past, you know, not major mistakes, but, and, and it's a high standard The still, I mean, Steeler fans, you know, are used to winning. They're used to, you know, uh, always being the cream of the crop. So, but he knows that he knows that, uh, let me go to the chat. Here in just a moment, uh, DJ Knox is in the building. So, uh, what's up to DJ Knox, who has joined the show? Uh, appreciate you joining in. And Lopan, his boot thing done showed up. Miss Mocha Bella is in the building. Indeed. So, Lopan is all excited. I ain't even gonna rat him out what he was doing earlier, Mocha, but, uh, appreciate you, Mocha, for jumping in, uh, with us tonight. Uh, and we're talking about this AFC North review. So, again, recap. Browns last place, fourth. I, I'm not, let me not say last place. Browns fourth. I got the uh, Ravens third, Bengals second, and the Pittsburgh Steelers bringing up the first place lockdown once again uh, and, and running division back to back, you know, on it. So um, my next topic, because we're going to stay in the NFL, uh, we're going to talk about marijuana. Mm hmm. And recently, the NFL has uh, decided to they're not doing anything. So I don't want anybody thinking I'm, I'm making some big time announcement, but they are looking into marijuana being a pain manager for players. And the reason I bring this up is more of, you know, right now, of course, if, if you get caught smoking weed or whatever, you're going to get you know, um, suspended and it's been brought to their attention that, you know, Hey, if used right, not recreational or anything like this, but it's a very, you know, uh, um, it's a drug that can be used to benefit players. Uh, and there's been reports and there've been stories out there that I've seen before where, you know, guys have said, yeah, you know, Taking, you know, marijuana, the you know, certain types of marijuana, because it's not just one marijuana, but taking certain types of marijuana, you know, helps with the pain management. And I'm not a drug person at all. I mean, I've never smoked a cigarette, uh, let alone uh, smoke marijuana or, or any other drug, you know, there is. But just we, like getting the stories and even like from... Me seeing, uh, no, I'm not gonna say it. I, I'm gonna say it. So, for me seeing people that's, you know, on marijuana, now, of course, they relax, chill, you know, and all that stuff. But I, to me, I think the NFL really needs to look into this very much. And the, and the reason that I say this and, and take it very seriously is because the alternative. How many times have you heard of a player getting strung out, you know, or not strung out, or getting addicted to pain pills? Uh, hello, Brett Favre. Brett Favre got addicted to pain pills. Now, I'm not saying that marijuana would have solved his problem or whatever, but maybe that's an alternative, you know, uh, and they could issue it. Maybe he doesn't get, you know, addicted to that. But he had a problem with it. And for a a sport or an employment, or, or not employment, uh, uh, 
what am I trying to say? For a um industry where pain being dished out, you know, is, is part of the menu. I think you owe it. You owe it to, to, to the players. You owe it, you know, to to their families, you know, because if they're in pain, it's not like they're at the facility all day. They have to go home with that stuff. And then the family's got to deal with that. And then again, if you get strung out on painkillers, you know, or, or addicted, I, I need to stop saying strung out. If you get addicted to painkillers, I mean, it's just like any other drug. I mean, you're addicted to it and it's not good for you. And you just start taking it more and more and more. Uh, And then, I mean, uh, Ryan Leaf was addicted to, you know, drugs, over-the-counter drugs, you know, and everything. I don't know if marijuana would have helped him out. But I'm just saying, if you're the NFL, you need to revisit this. You need to look at it. Times have changed. It's not the same. It's, It's Marijuana, weed, whatever it is that you, you know, uh, want to call it is that it's not the same as it used to be. It's not like, you know, we're going to go out there and smoke this sticky, icky, ooh, wee, and, you know, hang out, you know, and all that stuff. You still have that, you know, just like you can drink, you can drink an alcoholic beverage. If you drink too much, then, you know, you could get addicted to it, you know? But some people take it as a social drink. Some people take it as, you know, something to relax. And they drink wine or whatever. And they be like, that relaxes me, you know. And I think at this point with all the research and the the, um, uh, information that's there and can be found about it, the NFL needs to, you know, look into this and and change, you know, maybe just change. I'm not saying that they got to totally just do away with it. I don't know if they can, but change it just a little bit just a tad and i think that will help you know players i think the players will feel you know more like the nfl cares i think uh it helps out with guys in their careers uh because if you can deal with the pain much longer they play much longer and they entertain us because let's just be honest, that's the whole reason the NFL is around, to entertain us, you know, and as long as we paying, they're going to keep doing it, you know, but look into it, NFL, if it helps, I'm all for it, I'm not going to be smoking any of it, but I'm all for it, Big L said Mocha don't do weed, I hope Mocha don't do weed, because I mean, the way she be, oh, never mind, uh, yeah, uh, mocha yeah don't do it don't do it but uh we're gonna move on we almost done with the show tonight and again you're listening to the wait a minute show with your man jelani jb Bodie, and my man lopan who's in the building with me and we are chilling tonight and and me and lopan talked about this and i think we were really excited you know about this last topic and lopan was very excited steve bartman Steve Bartman. We're going to finish with a little Chicago uh, Chicago news. Uh, the Cubs, you know, as we all know, won the World Series uh, this past year. And after, wow, 107, 108 years, you know, of, of we'll get them next year. We'll be back next year and all this stuff. It finally happened. And the reason I'm bringing up Steve Bartman uh, if you haven't heard, you know, you should have, but Steve Bartman is a Cubs fan who I want to say 14 years ago, I think, uh, he was in the, he was in the stands. Cubs was on their way, uh, to possibly get into the world series. It's not, you know, guaranteed, but the man tried to catch a foul ball. People, you know, uh, blamed him for, uh, cursing the team. He interfered with the, uh, the foul ball and everything went downhill from there. The Cubs lost. They didn't make the world series and everyone blamed Bartman. Everyone blamed this dude. They threw stuff at him. They gave him death threats. And now this this brother had went into hiding. Y'all heard me talk about this before I talked about this when the Cubs won the world series and, uh, he couldn't go anywhere in the city of Chicago. And 
reportedly he still lives somewhere around there, which I, I am truly amazed that he did stay, you know, and that he just didn't move to another state, you know, on it. But they, to me, I think they have made this guy life miserable to a certain degree. And I think he himself has made life miserable for